Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens and News. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. And yep, a little late. Uh, I actually filmed the writing samples last week and, uh, and the video that went with it was, oh my god. So, here I am a week later. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, I brought up a lot of diverse topics this week. Is there uh, anything really speaking to you? <laughs> Let us know down in the comments. So let's take a look at the pens. Alright, so these are the pens that I've been using throughout the week. We have from left to right my Sailor Mini. I have a Toes Pencala Myrna. I have a Lummy 2000, a Schaefer Legacy 2, Mobile 225, Aurora 88, Platinum President, Pelican M1000, and finally a Visconti Homo Sapiens. As always, I'll be doing my writing samples in this Cognitive Surplus Notebook. Alright, so uh, let's just get the elephant in the room out of the way. No, it's not the 24th, it's now the 27th. A uh, busy weekend. But anyway, my very first pen is this Shafe, I'm sorry, the Sailor Mini. Uh, just a great form factor for a pen. I, uh, I bought a Pilot E95S with this, which is a new pen, and uh, was immediately inspired to buy a couple of these vintage pens. So Sailor Mini. This has a fine nib in it, and the ink in it is Sailor Blue. Just plain ordinary blue, although it looks very blue-black to me. Uh, I bought a pack of cartridges, and uh, I intend to refill them. I mislaid the one that I had when I did my uh, original first impression, so uh, I've got another one in it. But anyway, I'm going to empty it out and refill it when I'm done with this. Well, it's going to take a couple weeks, but when I'm done using it, I'll empty it out and refill it with something else more exciting. Not a big fan of cartridges, really. I uh, never have been. I, I, I just always feel like, Ugh, such a waste. Although, probably in the great scheme of things, it, it's a pretty small waste compared to other things I waste. My next pen is a Toes Pencala Myrna. I'm going to just make a quick adjustment to the exposure because, ew. Oh yeah, that's better. Alright, so Toes Pencala Myrna. This is a nice slim little pen. Kind of Pelican-esque. So Toes Pencala Probably at the time this was sold, it would have been just a, a Toes pen. And the ink in it is Roshizuku. Let me just look at the name real quick for the spelling. Tsukushi. Nice Japanese ink in my uh, Croatian pen. I don't use brown inks very often. I'm not sure why. You know, I used to really not like brown inks, but uh, I've gotten to appreciate them over the years. But I also don't own very many. I just don't seem to use them very often. For whatever reason. But that is a nice shade of brown. This pen I keep bringing into pens in use, but... Uh, you know, looking back in previous years, I uh, kind of quit. And, and it kind of makes sense because th this pen, if it's winter, it's pretty much a given that this pen is in use. This is my Lamy 2000. So I may, uh, you know, especially if I have a week with a lot of pens, I may forego showing this pen just because it is in use all winter. And uh, 
it gets kind of boring watching the same pen week after week do the same thing. I generally uh, give this pen a good cleaning around the holidays, and then again at the end of the school year, and then I, it takes the summer off. But just a great daily writer pen. Uh, so this is Pelican 4001 Brilliant Black which uh, maybe not my favorite black ink, but it's definitely a good one. Uh, one thing I think I noted a few weeks ago, this, this pen was having uh, pretty serious leakage problems. But after uh, my first refill, the problem was solved, so I think it was just an internal pressure issue. Uh, maybe I should have actually followed that instruction to let a few drops go when I fill it. But anyway, it's been working like a champ ever since, and I've already lost count of how many times I've refilled it with the same ink, because uh, you know, I do a lot of writing with this black. My next pen, I, uh, I forget which reviewer it was, but one of the ones I follow had just gotten one of these. Uh, different finish, of course, but uh, they'd just gotten one of these, and so... I felt inspired to ink mine up. This is a Schaefer Legacy 2, which is from the 1990s. It's just a very uh, interesting pen. Fun pen. So Schaefer Legacy 2. I have a medium nib in mine. I actually uh, might have preferred the finish that this reviewer had because they had a black i can't remember i want to say it might have been ode but i might be remember oh what the heck i can edit this out why don't i just quick look all right i stand corrected it was not ode it was uh doug rathbun at uh in ink acquiring minds and uh he borrowed it uh the ink in mine is platinum forest black Which is a fun Iron Gall ink. I like uh, Platinum series of Iron Gall inks. They're just kind of nice colors and kind of fun. This one doesn't have the dramatic color change of some of them. But on the other hand, it's a very nice understated green. So I enjoy that. Just a lot of fun all around. My next pen, which has been going strong for a couple weeks, so who knows if it'll be here next week. But this is a Mont Blanc. Um, I filmed the discussion part of this already, so I know I'm going to talk about the Mont Blanc 149 a little bit, a pen I do not own. But I really, really enjoy their vintage pens. You know, who knows, maybe down the road eventually I'll feel rich enough. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, the 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 Mont Blanc 149 is you can get pick one up new for right around a thousand dollars so uh, that would be more money than I've ever paid for a pen in my life but uh, I don't know put enough YouTube money together maybe but you know it's not high on my priority list there's other pens I want more and uh, this year I'm actually putting my uh, YouTube money except for one pen I did cheat. Uh, but other than that one pen, I'm putting my money towards a possible new camera. So, we'll see. But anyway, this is a, a vintage pen, probably from the 1960s. Uh, Mont Blanc 225. And of course, as you can see, it's an extra fine nib. And the ink in it is Roshizuku Murasaki Shikabu. Which is, uh, you know, uh, named after a famous Japanese lady poet. And, you know, it's a very nice, just kind of purple color. Nothing dramatic, but uh, nice. 
I like it. I don't know where it ranks on the, uh, will you replace it or not when the bottle runs empty yet, but, uh, that date is far in the future, so I guess I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just bringing up my list here of inks, because I don't remember what's in the next pen. Oh, yeah. Then we have the lovely Aurora 88. I uh, looked back, and yes, you did buy this pen for me. I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember last week, but you, through the advertising dollars on YouTube, bought both of my Aurora 88s. And the next pen, the Platinum President. <clears throat> so, uh, I don't know, I am tempted to get another Aurora 88, but like I said, I'm planning to save for a camera. And even if I don't buy it right away, because I'm kind of waiting for the technology to catch up, uh, as I want one of those cameras that's uh, mirrorless, I, um, uh, I don't know, I, I just feel like I want to put the money away now. Anyway, this is Sailor Gentle Apricot. And, you know, there's just certain things that I, my money is, uh, you know, this, this YouTube money is for very dedicated things. So it's got to go to, my, my philosophy is it's got to go toward the channel. Whether it's equipment for the channel, although admittedly a lot of that equipment gets shared with me in my regular life, or whether it's equipment, or whether it's, uh, pens for the channel, but, Anyway, it's got to go toward the channel in some form. The very first pen I ever bought, one with uh, YouTube money, is this next one. This is my Sailor President. No, sorry, Platinum President. Uh, which, apparently the model is discontinued, which makes me sad. But, uh, you know, what a good pen. I, I don't think they're discontinuing the nib because I think they're going to continue making the uh, their more expensive version of the pen that has all the Hiroshi on it and uh, Machie and so on. The Izumo. Sorry, the name slipped my mind for a minute. So this is a Platinum President. With a broad cursive italic nib. And the ink in it is Sumi ink. Don't sue me. Cara Green. Which, uh, looks like black to me. I also have a bottle of black. One thing I forgot to mention last week when I showed this ink, it is a scented ink. Not that the scent is anything amazing. But something I forgot to mention last week. I don't know, it just kind of smells vaguely sweet. Like, generic flower scent. For whatever that's worth. And then I have my Pelican M1000. This is a pen I bought for myself, not with channel income, but... Uh, it was also not as expensive as they usually are because I found a good seller. Uh, it's a seller where if you buy at the right time, you can get some quite nice pens at a low cost. Then you go other times of the year and you're like, What? How many more hundreds of dollars is that than what I paid? So Pelican M1000. This has a medium nib. I'd kind of like to put a fine nib in it, but uh, you know, that's a goal for the future. Um... The ink in it is Sailor Gentle. Pesh. I may be mispronouncing that, but... You know. It's a French word on a Japanese ink, and it kind of messes with my brain. Uh, Platinum has a lot of French connections, which uh, is kind of wild. I'm not sure why, but... Hey, that's how they roll. This is a... This is an awful ink in the wrong pen because it's so pale. But this is a good pen for showing off this ink. And my last one. Um, a very nice pen. I bought it uh, 
gently used from actually from Goulet pens. I, I think it was one of their display models. Uh, but anyway, I uh, they had the mag the magnet here failed, so I have glued in a what is that a tiger eye or something. But uh, the pen is a good writer. Uh, what I have discovered though is I can't take this pen around with me because uh, I end up with a cap full of ink if it gets jostled too much. So the pen stays at home. So this is a Visconti Homo Sapiens. Visconti. I uh, need to be careful of my uh, fake Italian accent now because I have an Italian foreign exchange student. And uh, he sounds nothing like my fake Italian accent, so um, I got to be careful. So this is Visconti Homo Sapiens. The ink in it is Noodlers. And I'm using this to address envelopes right now. Rome Burning. So this is a fun ink if you ever get a letter written in it because uh, the brown will wash off the page and what's left behind is this very permanent bulletproof violet color that's actually kind of pretty. So uh, Nathan Tardiff is a uh, an interesting dude. He, he makes some very interesting inks. And this is definitely one of them. Um, you need to see more Noodler's inks on this channel, I think. You know, I, I went through the spell where I, I gotta use up bottles, but then I realized that I'm using up the bottles of stuff I don't even like, so... Oh, what's the fun in that? Okay, so before I go back to uh, me cavorting on the gimbal... Hey, I should show you the gimbal. So this is it, it comes uh, kind of short, and then it's got a pole that you can extend it. And then when you turn it on, it'll, it'll keep the, the camera either oriented like this or like this. And does a decent job, doesn't help much with the shakes and so on, but it does help with that. Also, if I am ever so inclined at the base, it opens up into sort of a tripod deal. I think I need to have, yeah, I need to have it extended a bit to do the tripod deal. But anyway, I can do it, you know, an impromptu tripod thingy. Maybe uh, work a little on the balance. <laughs> but kind of fun. It, you know, it uses, uh, it's, it's rechargeable, so there's a motor in it that helps keep the camera oriented properly. And, you know, this only works with cell phones, but uh, you know, I'll play with this for a few months if I really like it. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a gimbal that I can use a good camera with and do some handheld with that. But I think this will be handy for some of the fall projects I have coming. Uh, on the pen front, I want to just show you a couple upcoming pens. So uh, I got these pens cleaned up just recently. Uh, this is a Garant. I forget its first name, but I'll know when I do the video. Oh. A Garant, whatever that says. Anyway, apparently a medium nib, and with uh, Russian writing inside. So I'll be curious to do a translation on that. You know, it's it's not, whoa, what an amazing pen or anything, but it's a nice pen. One of those slim black pens I like, a little moisture left over from cleaning. Um, and then inside, one of those captured converters. It, it does a good suction of ink. And, bonus... I can actually remove it, which a lot of them you can't. So that was a nice surprise. Another interesting pen that I picked. Oh, I almost, I'm kind of wondering. The nib looks a oh, okay, that lighting is terrible. Let's zoom that in. There we go. So the nib looks a little like it might be bent. I'll uh, write with it a little. We'll, we'll find out if it's bent or not. You know, it feels smooth, so it may write just fine. So that's one of those deals where, uh, you know, my first principle, my very first pen repair video was uh, first do no harm. I think this may be one of those cases where first do no harm. Uh, another pen that I've got coming very soon is this Flaro. 
let's zoom out. <laughs> zoom out. There we go. This Flaro, which is a, a Romanian brand. Um, I have a Flaro that I've been working on. It's just got so many issues that uh, I don't know if it'll ever see the light of day. But this one will. I don't know how it writes yet because, of course, I haven't filmed any of these videos. But uh, it's certainly a bright little guy. Snap cap. Bring out fairly ordinary feed. Uh, or, sorry, nib. And then this uh, section here is... I, I don't think I've run into a metal section quite like that. And then inside, um, another, I guess we'll call it a captured converter, but this is even more like a converter than the other pen, because it, it's totally removable. It just fits on this thin little post. So, uh, interesting pen. So I'm kind of curious to see what it's like. Uh, the Pen Collector, which is a YouTube channel that I subscribe to, is, is actually Romanian, and he's done quite a number of flowers on his channel. So uh, I, I should look through his uh, body of work and see if he's done this model. And finally, I've got my mystery of the collection. This one's this one's a bugger. <laughs> I, I have not figured this out. So we got Reform. But then here, so it's a reform pen. Let's zoom in on this, see if you can see it. Oops, wrong way. That is definitely not English. That is the Cyrillic alphabet. I don't know if it's Russian, Ukrainian, Bulgarian, or what. So I gotta know the history of this pen. Uh, this is weird. You know how this knob is just like disconnected from the pen. I also see here this part you can't tell with this lighting so I got to do a better job when I actually film the video but this is translucent here you can actually see through it and then it I don't know if it's dirt or if it's just on purpose but you can't see that through down here. Unscrew it. And it's got a you know a reform nib. The trouble with this pen is uh, I can't properly operate it yet. So I, I have to figure out how to take it apart, I think. Because what I've done, you know, obviously this bit unscrews. So I unscrew it and, huh? So it's, it screws into something, you know, presumably the piston. But, uh, you know, I can't pull it and I don't want to force it so uh, I'm kind of at a at a loss how to deal with this pen I am uh, toying with the idea you know I've tried soaking just the section uh, right now I'm to the point I'm toying with the idea maybe I pull the nib and feed out and get water in from that end and try to soak loose whatever's in here um, and like I said, I'm not 100% sure how this pen fills anyway. So uh, <laughs> this is one of those challenges. It, it may be years before you see me do a video on this pen, but this is the kind of challenge that makes me really enjoy working with vintage pens. Plus, I didn't pay too much for this either. So uh, this will be fun when I finally figure it out. Just one of those little things that I enjoy. And of course, I have... Uh, a cup. Zoom out. And of course I have a cup full of uh, other vintage pens that are ready to go uh, for video purposes. So uh, yeah, you can look forward to that. I'm also going to be doing some more rodeos. Um, you would think that now that I've finally gotten my first paycheck I'd have bought a pen, but nope. So no new pens on the horizon, but I'm going to be doing some more rodeos this winter I think. Uh, just to compare different pens, because I... People seem to respond well to those, and uh, I enjoy doing them, so... Uh, yeah, I look forward to a few rodeos. Uh, my rodeo that's going to come up this week... And that's all the clue you get till the video comes out. So, uh, back to me on the gimbal! So like I said, those are the pens and inks I was using last week. Um... 
it honestly didn't change this week. I, uh, busy couple of weeks and, you know, that brief time where I fit in like, oh wait, I got my two toy, I'm gonna film my, uh, my writings, no, my talking portal on, uh, with my, uh, gimbal. Yeah, that was a fail. Um, spouted off a few things that I just like, I eh, don't want to put that in a video and, uh, few other things that just didn't express well and I was just like oh flipping nerve herders it's late Sunday night I just don't want <laughs> I don't want to do any of this anymore so I gave up and uh shelved it but here I am um using the writing sample but like I said for this week the pens didn't change which uh why because I haven't had time to write much this week but I do have more time coming, so I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, I did I did include a couple of topics down below in the video description, and uh, let's see if I can talk about them without ruining it like I did last week with the pens in use. Um, one of the things that came up was owning nice things, and uh, in in that video that I did last week, I had several very nice pens. What's wrong with that? Nothing. If, you know, you're paying cash for it. Um, I had, a, a last Saturday I worked a, a concessions for the junior high volleyball tournament. Uh, all of my students in my organization were in stuff, but doesn't matter because your organization is responsible for this weekend, even if none of them can participate. So, there's me spending many 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 hours working concessions and uh anyway i've discovered i was told that uh some kids in school were trying to get hold of uh some camp okay, not catholic so if i screw this up i apologize i'm not trying to be offensive they're trying to get some uh community service hours is that a thing in the catholic church anyway uh, so I told them, hey, I could use you, especially in the afternoon. And uh, they showed up, you know, in the afternoon. I Honestly, I didn't need them. I, I handled the whole, I could have handled the whole thing all day but all by myself. But whatever. Uh, they came, so I, I, I stayed open so they could feel like, hey, we did something. But uh, I had been spending a lot of time writing in my notebook. I actually writing a video that I may or may not get to filming tonight. And uh, I was using my Visconti Gold Point Number One, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful special edition. And um, oh, it's in the kitchen because I'm washing it. <laughs> but anyway, gorgeous, gorgeous pen. And uh, they asked me how much it cost. I'm like, ah, <laughs> spent my YouTube money on it because I can't afford it as a teacher. And I guess I've just always been uncomfortable telling people what I spend on things. It, I feel like you either get the, Huh, well, you, you overpaid you, dummy. Or you get the, Wait, how can I get that deal? So I prefer just not to say what things cost. And uh, I'll spend lots of money on some things that I value. In fact, uh... Hemingway Jones, another YouTuber, did, uh, recently did a video on the Mobile 149, which is a, you know, about a thousand dollar pen if you buy it new, and uh, tried to justify, you know, why is this pen worth it to me? And clearly, it's not worth it to this guy because I don't own one, but uh, Hemingway Jones does, and uh, he spent a long time explaining it. And I thought, you know, good for you. Um, high quality tools help. I'm not much on clothing. This shirt is many, many years old. I recently replaced all my shirts I use at school because they were not only many, many years old, but uh, developing holes and such. I don't care about clothes. I don't spend a lot of money on clothes. I don't know. Maybe if I had a nice body or something, then I just like, hey, check out my massive bicep or you know that kind of thing maybe then i'd spend more money on clothing but eh, i don't care I'm, I'm not good looking i'm just kind of average so uh i don't spend money on clothing um i felt like i 
overspent when I bought my car. 17 years later, I'm thinking, I kind of got a steal because she's still going strong. I mean, it's a 21-year-old car and uh, no real issues yet. I mean, they could start any day at that age, but not yet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm glad I spent a little more money there. Uh, fountain pens. Now, of course, I, I like to buy the vintage ones that need repair work, but uh, got a few that spent a pretty good amount of money on. And uh, thank you to you. <laughs> uh, I have that money to spend because uh, there's a limit to how much I'll spend out of my teaching income, but YouTube income has to go to the channel. So, uh, you know, camera gear, expensive fountain pens, cheap fountain pens. You know, whatever. It has to be channel related. So, uh, thank you. And uh, I do get a lot of pleasure out of some of them. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's all, it all comes down to what, what, what do we value. I value uh, different things than maybe other people do. I have more books than I know what to do with. I mean, if you looked around my living room, you'd be like... Oh my God, you're a book hoarder. Because <laughs> I have a lot of books. I, I just like them. I read them. I use them. Uh, same with fountain pens. Clothing. Not so much. You know, I prefer not to go out in public naked. But getting much beyond that. Psh, who cares? It's clothes. So, uh, yeah, we all have our areas. I have a relative who spends a lot of money on bicycles. Whereas me, I'm still using the bicycle I got as a teenager. So, uh, yeah, it's all what we value. So, uh, yeah, I'll spend money on nice things. The camera you're seeing me on is actually a pretty nice thing. The computer right here that I'm going to edit this on is a pretty nice thing. And uh, these lights that are illuminating me, cheapies! <laughs> like some nice lights but don't have them and that light back there i've had for doing the math 22 years so uh make of that what you will uh i, I did a vi what the heck do i mean by that video oh <laughs> my i you can see my same notes in the video description, it says, Video of water drainage stuff. And I'm just like, what? But I remember. So I've been reading, and uh, I'm about to finish a book called uh, Cadillac Desert. It's about water in the west of the United States. And uh, I'm very excited to do the, the review of that. I am going to do some on-location shooting. I want to go to, there's a dam south of here. I may go to a dam north of here. Definitely want to hit the Garrison Dam, and apparently there's a dam in Belfouche, South Dakota. Um, anyway, several dams I want to hit because uh, I'm thinking on location to show this whole Western U.S. thing about water. Because here's the deal. Uh, I, I was walking to, actually to sell concessions last Saturday morning, and I'm just like, look at all the water in the ditch gallons of water you know kind of in the street in the cracks but it hadn't rained we had rain this week but it hadn't rained by the time i filmed that it was all runoff from lawn sprinklers gross i hate the idea of wasting water so grass can be green now, I, I get it. You know, you, you're starting a new lawn. You probably have to water. You know, you know that's one of those things like, okay, necessary evil. But let it go. It's just grass. Let it turn brown. Let it hibernate. And uh, when the water comes back, it can regrow. That's what I do with my lawn. And uh, I just thought it was a good illustration of what was going on in that book because... Some parts of this country aren't meant to have lots of people or aren't meant to have green lawns all the time. 
and uh, we've tried to tame nature, but there's only so much water out here. I uh, have been reading that book about communities that are depending on millennia old or more groundwater. And what happens when that groundwater's gone? It's not being replenished at the rate they need. Um, it, it's just kind of a eerie idea. Here, we're kind of teetering on the edge of whether it's sustainable or not. I think the thing that makes it still sustainable here is our low population. So, look forward to that. That That's going to be interesting. I'll probably get myself in a lot of trouble when I do that book review. But I still have a very spoilery uh, Hyperion book review to come, so look forward to that first. <laughs> um, I also wrote Family Trees. Now, I was going to hold it up, but I held it up during the first filming of this, but it's now put away, so I'll just t tell you about it. I got a binder in the mail this, well, I guess it was last week, um, family tree of my father's side of the family, and you know, it's a little more limited. They're, they're looking back into Poland, and they've got the whole communist thing, and they've got World War II, and, the, and a whole bunch of different disruptions. So uh, the family tree is kind of lacking on that side of the family. You know, I've got one for my mother, too, but her, you know, being... Not Polish, being more uh, Western European, she has a much longer family tree. But but anyway, the important thing is it was just so interesting because uh, some of it, you know, okay, cousins I've either heard about or have met. And then a fair number of people, I'm just like, okay, never heard of you. <laughs> so uh, kind of interesting. Um, so I'm glad I have a relative who put it together. I, I need to write her a thank you note. Um it's a good thing there are people interested in that. You know, I'm interested in reading it. Not so much interested in doing the work. So, uh, kind of fun. Um, I obviously was bouncing around while I was coming up with the topics. I This one was supposed to fit in better. It just kind of was supposed to mesh. But then I eliminated some topics and added some topics. And it, it kind of stood on its own. I'm just like keep throw away but i think it's worth keeping so i'm starting a new school year okay i'm well into a new school year over a month into it um and, and there's always that question of you know how do you treat kids how do you how do you talk to kids what do you do when they screw up what do you do when they're right what do you do when they're just uh well she weren't being so obnoxious you know a anything it took me back to college and uh, back in college, I, I took biology when I was a junior. I, I am a physics major. I took the biology because I was just like, well, you know, I could take the what they call baby biology. It was kind of the intro, not even intro, just a really basic biology for non-biology majors. But then I thought to myself, no, I'm going to take the real thing. So I took two semesters of real biology that all the biology majors took. And uh, for biology one, we, well, 101, but, you know, the introductory course, we had two professors. Uh, one covered most of the course, and then there was another one that came in just for a few weeks, kind of as a guest professor. Uh, he was like a, I don't know if he was an MD. I, I can't remember anymore what his degree was. You know, we called him Dr whatever he was. Uh, yeah, I forgot his name. I don't care about his name because I don't like the guy. But anyway, so he came in and did kind of the anatomy part of biology. And uh, he really set me on edge. He, he, he liked to do the thing where he'd, you know, randomly call on people like, okay, that, you know, that gets people to participate. I do the same thing. Um, but then if you're wrong, he would insult you. And uh, so it quickly got to the point where nobody was volunteering. And he, he was asking, you know, what do the kidneys do? And 
you know, he's asking and nobody's volunteering. And he, you could tell he's getting frustrated because it was like the 20th question in a row where nobody would raise their hand. And I thought, okay, I'm a future teacher. I'm going to take one for the team. I'm going to raise my hand. I'm feeling bad for the guy. So I raised my hand. I'm like, you know, because he was asking what filters the blood. And I said, kidneys? Like that. You know, raising the voice at the end. So I don't know why did I raise my voice at the end. Because I was like, I'm scared to be wrong. And that's like protecting myself kind of, not consciously, but subconsciously like, Okay, I'm protecting myself because it's obvious I wasn't sure of my answer. So if I'm wrong, I'm like, well, obviously I just didn't know for sure. I just felt like I should say something, you know, all that. And he gets in my face and he goes, are you asking me or telling me? And I said, telling you? <laughs> just like that. And he says, yeah, I don't think you know. <laughs> And at that moment, I'm just like, I am never volunteering in your class ever again in my life. I was right, by the way, kidneys do filter. But he made the environment in that classroom so uncomfortable that nobody wanted to volunteer. Nobody wanted to risk being wrong. And somebody who was right, this guy, still got insulted and humiliated. And I'm just like, I'm holding up a finger to you, dude. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, never volunteered for him again. I, and luckily I never had to deal with him again after that class. So, yay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it just goes to show um, how you interact with people is so important. And I guess I've never felt the need... To just humiliate students. Um, you know, why did he have to say, are you asking me or are you telling me? And, you know, don't you recognize a lack of confidence? You know, just kind of encourage you. Yeah, good, good job. You know, you sound nervous, but you're right. You should have more confidence in yourself. Nope, let's tear the guy down. And uh, I didn't get the worst of it, you know. I don't even want to quote some of the ways he insulted some of my classmates because jackass. <laughs> so uh, I try not to be that jackass to my own students. I, I just think that's important. For whatever it's worth. Okay, moving on. Uh, I, I did add one other topic. I, uh, I think I added this since I filmed the writing sample. But anyway, uh, this kind of seems to come out of nowhere, but yeah, it's really out of somewhere. I was reading on NPR last weekend that uh, Switzerland, just the Swiss voters recently approved same-sex marriage. And I read that and I thought, what? I thought Europe was ahead of the United States on stuff like that, that they recognized, they were better about recognizing that, oh yeah, People are human, and uh, just because they want to marry someone of the same gender doesn't mean it's any different from somebody of the opposite gender. But uh, apparently not Switzerland, so that blew me away. Especially, okay, and, I, and I'll concede that probably I don't know Swiss culture as well as I should. You know, I knew Ireland recently approved gay marriage, but I'm like, okay, it's Ireland. You know, they had the whole Catholic thing, and they're only now coming out from under the boot heel of the Catholic Church. But uh, I guess Switzerland is more conservative or religious than I thought. I don't know. But it just really surprised me. You know, I, I realize that there are countries in Europe that are very behind the times. Poland, uh, uh, Hungary, probably even worse. Um, that You know, they just need to grow up and realize that you know, who cares if uh, two men or two women marry? It's They're making a commitment to each other, which uh, these kind of commitments make our society stronger. But, uh, you know, uh, there's still people that are like, Ew, that's nasty, because they're like the same gender and stuff, you know. I, 
don't get that attitude. I I have said before I used to be a lot more conservative, but that's one of those things where just like, who cares? I've, I've always kind of been that way. Um, you don't want to get gay married? Don't get gay married. Why, why stop other people? And uh, so anyway, I just thought that was very interesting that the Swiss voters were so late to the party. And it kind of makes me wonder, you know, what about other countries in Europe? Are there other countries that I'm thinking are progressive that are still like, no, we're not going to let them gays marry. Maybe, yeah, maybe they are. Um, educate me down in the comments. I, I guess that's one of those things that I need to know better because Europe is not a monolith. Some countries are very progressive. Others are very retrograde. I said retrograde. <laughs> retrograde, kind of like United States is about a lot of things. So uh, every country is different. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And I brought up a plethora of topics, and I do promise to be more timely with pens in use. You know, I uh, learned my lesson last year, except I didn't. But, you know, I'm remembering the lesson now, so I'm going to start filming pens in use a little earlier, so it's up on a Friday night. And uh, anyway, feel free to leave a comment about whatever down in the comments. I guess I'm not real organized for that this week. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.